And we are back again with another team preview here with the Plat Chat crew. Of course, we still have the OCE uh, with us, the OCE guys. And, you know, we're eating fairy bread and and f fucking d d Vegemite and shit. Like, we're doing that. So, like, good stuff. Pro oh, God, I just demonetized the video in the first, like, 10 seconds, didn't I? So, like, <laughs> uh, either way. So, so yeah, we're doing a team preview. This time it's going to be Toronto. Be, yeah, it's going to be Toronto. No one's going to watch it. So, it, we're here with Toronto <laughs> Defiant in the first one. So, Toronto Defiant is going to be the team preview of today. And it's a interesting squad now last year my heart was broken into a million pieces have you ever seen that locket gif where it opens up and it's like bunger my beloved and it says like bunger my beloved that's me toronto my beloved it opened up last year i was like i can't wait for toronto and then they, i was my my hopes and dreams were dashed crushed uh into a million pieces but this year the roster is honestly more exciting potentially than it was last year overall yeah. i mean they have some pretty. They have some interesting players on the roster. Some good players. Some wild card players. Standout let's, names. Let's discuss. Let's discuss. So, first of all, what when we look at this mix of names, like what's the first one? If you were to like dip your toe into the pool, you know, and you get, you're like, oh, is it cold? Is it warm? Like, are we getting a good vibe? Are we getting a meh vibe? How are we feeling about this? I think we're getting a good vibe. We're getting such a good vibe that I forgot to change my wallpaper. So just real quick, you seen uh, yeah. the wrong <laughs> thing here. Oh, I was very ready for the Toronto Defiant, Production clearly. value. Um, <laughs> yeah, it is. Like, whoa, now we're certainly Toronto uh, Defiant. But I think they're not... I'm not going to get into specifics just yet, but their support line is, is really, really good. Like, you guys, Torong is absolutely nutty. Um, I think their DPS has pretty high potential as well. And the tanks look interesting. Maybe that's, you know, that's maybe the best thing I'll say about that. Um, yeah, I think this is a generally a good team. I think this is an upgrade over their previous team as well. Clearly... Overactive Media have wanted to build a far more competitive roster, which is great for the Toronto fans. They're trying so um, hard, man. They really are. They spend, <laughs> they spend a lot they of really money. Want to be competitive. They, I mean, they have good teams in the other games. In CDL, they have Toronto Ultra, who have done super well. Not at this exact moment. They're, they're still on the comeback. And then they have Mad Lions and LEC, who the other teams under Overactive Media do well. It's just Toronto Defiance always just been that one you know, sore thumb sticking out that just hasn't been great. So they want to fix that. And I appreciate that what they're doing to the team. I, I actually talked about this recently uh, on my stream and it was Toronto Defiant is the least successful team in the Overwatch League as a franchise. Like I what, was Houston? looking... Yeah, uh, no, well, Houston actually had some success in the first season because I was looking at it. Oh. Toronto Defiant have only made $45,000 in prize pool uh, throughout their entire time of being here, which is pretty hard to do because like... You know, you really just get money for existing. Um, but I yeah, mean, also they, they've been in the league since the inception of like they've just added more and more prize money comparatively to Houston, where there was like less prize money to be had. Correct? In season yeah. One. So yes. Yeah. So, so like, obviously, you can make your arguments for Houston, but yeah, Toronto is just—they've always been very mediocre. Like, I don't think they've ever had a season where they finished in the top half. Um, I think this is by far their best roster. I agree uh, with our rule. I have some concerns. I think I'm being more critical on Toronto than I should be, but yeah, obviously, we can break that down as we talk more specifics. Okay, well then let's talk specifics then. We'll we'll, we'll start since Harold he kind of did a weird champ. He kind of did a little bit of a weird <laughs> champ. He was like, hey, he was like, ooh, the, like let's talk the tank line then. So the tank line it has names that we know that we recognize. I mean they have yep. Hotba, they have Muse recently of the of the LA of the LA Gladiators, and Hotba just came from the Fusion. Um, so like or was it? Well, he, yeah, Fusion. So <laughs> looking at this tank line, surely it doesn't seem that bad, right? It seems like they have a decent amount no, of no, flexibility. No, no, no. I, here. I, I am like, memeing. I'm okay. memeing a little bit. It's definitely not that bad. It's I think it's I think it's uh it, it's not the, the most exciting tank line. Um I think Muse did struggle a little bit last year. Um so meta could be a bit of a problem for him again if he doesn't, you know, shape up on the more Ryan based stuff. I mean, who who really knows what is going to get played at the end of the day? I uh, I've no qualms about Muse coming back on dive tanks. It should be fine. Um and Hopper was reasonable last year as well. But, I mean, his fusion just kind of crumbled and I I I think Hopper had some strong moments. He had a really good Zarya, to be fair. And if we have a Zarya meta, I feel good about that. Um, but I'm just, I'm, I'm not as excited about this tank line as I'm about others. And here's the thing about this Toronto team as well, is if you want to build a team that can really compete, and I don't I don't know what overactive media's expectation is for the team. I don't know if they're trying to build a team for like the literal championship or, or if they just want to improve. Um, but I, I don't know if this team is good enough to fight for a championship if you don't have a super exciting you know lineup in every single position on your roster like if there's any yeah. sort of holes at all then you're like well you can't be a championship team anymore so the, this is probably to me maybe the weakest part of their their lineup this year but it's not even that weak like they're not they're not going to be a losing team they're just not going to be fighting for a title yet i don't think 
Yeah, I when we look at some of these other teams that are brought in new rookie tanks or they've com committed to one single tank, I think Toronto Defiant, they deserve credit in this regard because they've actually added a, a relatively good main tank and a relatively good off tank that can like hold their own within the league. Like you said, they're not going to be the creme of the crop when we look at the best tanks in NA. But if you look at the tanks of some of these other teams that are like the lower teams in North America last year or even like mid-table, like, I think Toronto Defiant, they, they won't be held back by their tank line. And I think they deserve some credit for having a solid off tank, having a solid main tank that, you know, they they, they won't change the world. They won't be the ones winning some of these series, but they're, they, they're going to be able to hold their own. I think that Hotpa is a solid pickup. I, I think that Views is a solid pickup. I don't have that much more to say about it, to be honest. I think they're just, you know, league average tanks, which is sometimes, I think, underrated a little bit because people are so excited about some of the new talent coming in or some of these bigger names that are going to be solo tanks but i think that hotba and muse are actually going to give them some kind of stability uh where some of the other teams in na are missing that all right i'm gonna come in out of nowhere and i'm gonna say this i really don't like this tank line i th i <laughs> okay. I, okay. I think i think muse was incredibly poor for the los angeles gladiators a incredibly great roster poor even i yeah he he uh the dpa has come out and said that he had a lack of flexibility and was one of the major issues with the los angeles gladiators which is not good going into overwatch 2 where you only have one tank and then hopper is his counterpart and i think any player that has been a part of five teams in five seasons there is something fundamentally a problem that needs to be solved like the other players that do that they they generally have been hopping between teams because they've never found a home hopper has been i don't know like a roller coaster of emotions like we'll go through one meta where i'm like is hopper like one of the best off tanks and then he will go to the next one he's just like turbo feeding it feels like in a way i don't i'm not sold on hopper being as good especially as some of these great rookie players coming in i'm worried about this tank line and i think if toronto is going to Stumble, I think it's going to be with that tank line. Damn, oh. you're harsh on Hotba. You know, you were comparing him to like the the the, the, yeah, the likes of people that are killing teams with their personalities well, and that's, stuff. That's I don't really think that's hot. He's that's not killing it's, teams. Yeah, I mean, I don't think that's really Hotba's thing, right? Like, he's not yeah. someone that's out there. Like, everyone's like, oh god, we got to get rid of this fucking guy. Like, get him off the team. Like, it's more so like he just role wise and like his fit the team. I feel he hasn't really found the perfect team for him by any means. And like. He, he, it's tough to like slot him into a roster because like a big part of his sell, like a selling point, right? Like in season one was that he played DPS as yeah. well as off tank. And then that went away with the uh, roll lock and two, two, two. So like, uh, it's interesting. And like you said, he's had, he's looked really good and he's looked mad. I mean, do we, as looking at this tank line and Custa is now saying he thinks it's like one of his least favorite tank lines. Do we agree with that for like what this team's looking to aspire to? Is this going to hold them back potentially? If they're trying to go for a championship, yeah, they, I don't. They're not going to win off this tank line, it's, or at least it would be unlikely to. I, I don't think I hate it as much as uh, Custer does. I think I'll, I'll give him a tiny bit more credit, but I, it doesn't inspire like this kind of confidence that you need when you look at. Like I can look at the. We just talked about Glad, so I'll use him as an example. Reiner comes in hot off great success in tier two. Space is space. Um, he, he was he's a roll star. I believe he's a current roll star, right? So yeah, um, and. That's the kind of tank line you need if you want to fight for a championship. And so Glads are in position to do that. And Toronto are in positions in some areas to fight for a championship. And then others just doesn't look like it. All right. I think they're in the middle of the pack. I, I, know, I want to NA, retract which is my probably hate like statement. 12. Sorry, Gary. <laughs> okay. I, wanna, okay, I dislike it. Okay. Hank makes it seem like I think these guys are like, shouldn't be in the league and stuff like that. I'm saying in relativity to like some of their <laughs> players on this roster, like I think it's going to, I think it's their weak point. And that's how I want to yeah. phrase it. Hate so, yeah. is a strong word. <laughs> I mean, if you really think about it, this words are all semantics are interesting, right? Because like disliking is kind of just a very, very microscopic hatred. <laughs> you really think about it. It's, uh, it's all it's all relative, you know. It's all relative when you think about it. The uh, language is microscopic an interesting hatred. Thing. It's a microscopic. <laughs> hatred. I was not comparing their tank line to like gladiators in Shanghai. So when yeah. Neville does that, it it really shifts the tone of the conversation. Because I was like, Johnny, it depends. Hey, it depends. For Lono Spitfire, yeah, Toronto's tank line is pretty good compared to Spitfire. <laughs> are they That's are they good. going? What what are the goals of these teams? Like you have to when you look at it. There's a Survive. huge budget. There's a huge budget <laughs> difference between Toronto and London. Just be clear as well. So from the from the org perspective, there's different goals there. Like if you're spending a fuck ton of money, you are probably looking for something. I'd say that Toronto is spending enough money to look for maybe a regional title, at least, maybe. Mm -hmm. 
They want to be in the. Title. They want to be okay, contenders. Your tank line. Well, let's let's not, save not let's save expectations Sorry, for later. Let's save expectations for later. So the tank line were mixed. I mean, my point of view, I definitely agree. It looks extremely underwhelming for what I think this organization wants to achieve. And heading to Overwatch Two, it does look underwhelming. Um, I'm I'm actually more humped, more pump humped. I'm more humped. <laughs> I'm more pumped for for Hotba than I am Muse. As in the tank line, honestly. Yeah, I agree. I think Hoppa's uh, solid. You know? Yeah, I think Hoppa's pretty, he's pretty decent. He's shown, even though he's ups and downs, he at least averages out when we do the oscillations to pretty decent. You know? Yeah. So, like, I, so I, I'm okay with Hoppa overall. And you can't go wrong with someone that has at least some extra flexibility in going into Overwatch 2, right? Like, you can't he's really. He's just a mercenary trying to make his yeah, way yeah. through the Overwatch Well, team, then let's know? talk. Um, <laughs> since I, then we're trying to, like, I guess we're, we're going to keep this format for right now, for today when we're doing this, is let's go support. So they've added Chorong and Twilight. Myself, Ooh. I think that's a spicy support line. This is talking about like putting them in places where we're like, could this compete with a championship? Twilight Churong, 100% could compete for a championship. I think they are absolutely phenomenal players. We haven't seen much of Twilight in recent years, but every time he did come in and play for the Shock, he was sick. So it's like, I have good expectations for him. He's obviously very talented. Uh, Chorong is one of the best uh, main support prospects coming into the league. Very, just very strong all around. Like, I don't, like, it's hard to find fault in this when you're comparing them to like other, like, you know, support lineups in the league. Like, I, I would put this, you know, obviously a few more question marks, but I think this is one that could compete with like your Lee Jagon Iziakis and, you know, some of your other best support lineups in the league. So I like them. I think this is the best part of the trying to find. I don't think he's one of the best. I think he is the best main support or yeah. potentially Ooh. even support rookie Agreed. coming through. Ooh. Um, oh, he's yeah. he's absolutely cracked. And the, the, the thing about him is well, it's not like he just played one good season last year. He's like, oh, he looks pretty good. No, like I've covered this guy since he was on like awful teams and he was a standout main support on bad teams. Like, how do you do that? How do you be, how do you be a standout main support on a bad team? That's hard to do. And he was doing that. So... This guy is unreal. I think he was clearly one of the key pieces Toronto were targeting in the offseason. Um, and this is probably one of the biggest W's for Toronto have, to have claimed in the offseason because uh, he, he would have been on a top team on, on, on another roster, potentially if Toronto didn't snap him up. So, yeah, I have, I have a lot of faith in this back line. Toronto, Twilight is crazy. Like, that is the kind of championship caliber, you know, support line that you need to, to go for titles. Absolutely, sure. yeah. Okay, so in agreement, the support line is looking nutty then. I, I'm a big Twilight simp. I think Twilight's fucking incredible. I'm not going to yeah. lie. So I, I think Twilight's really, really good. So I do like the support line a lot. I think it's ex exactly what you said, Avril. If you're wanting to build a championship roster, this is the type of support line you're trying to get. So, okay, not much, not too much to say on the support line here because looking really good. So let's talk DPS because it also gets a little interesting here as well. So they have finale aldo and hisu this how what are our thoughts what are our thoughts on this one and we should um, say that aldo he's he's his travel is delayed right like yeah he couldn't get a, yes. get a he's visa issues. so yeah his his, I, I, his I travel is delayed like yeah, yeah he, I, it was either visa or like covid related stuff because of visa or I'm something to find like, it but reddit is down so add it in there great. like in, in that way but so let's just regardless like okay maybe all though won't be here for the beginning of the season potentially but let's just talk about let's still talk about the roster as if it's one uh you know mm -hmm. all the same sure. right now yeah you, you kind of have to because i think most people would talk about speedily as if he just he just magically was here so i think yeah, yeah we'll just pretend yeah. all though is i i think you have to start with hisu i i think the, the, and Hisu is a very interesting player. Like his career arc and like where he is now. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm lagging out. Don't worry about that. Just listen to my voice. Focus on my voice. Focus on my voice. I'm lagging out. Um, <laughs> because he, I think people really respected Hisu after the stint he had on Philadelphia Fusion in 2020. And uh, it, he just decided to, you know, join Toronto Defiant. And he was supposed to be like the star player for that team and really be the pop off DPS player for that team. And I think to some degree, like he showed that he's not necessarily like on par with some of the best DPS players around the league. But towards the end of the season, like some of the stuff he did on Hanzo and like some of the highlights he had on some of those heroes were, were like out of out of this world. Like it was so much fun actually watching Toronto Defiance. And I think it was the first time 
where Toronto Defiant, you know, when he played alongside Aspire sometimes, like it was one of the first times where you really enjoyed tuning into Toronto Defiant games because there was actually like a reason to watch. There was someone who actually like popped off in a really uh, interesting way and played really fun Overwatch. So you got to give Heezo some props there. If he wants to fully like get promoted to the next level, like I feel like he really has to step up this year. I think this is like a make or break year for Heezo and how we view of him as a player because I feel like last year we kind of gave him like a little bit of benefit of the doubt, you know, like he's joined the Toronto Defiant team. They're they're struggling a little bit, but he's still like trying to carry his weight. If you really want to start competing with some of these top teams, I mean, you got to pop off, especially in a 5v5 format when DPS is uh, of even more importance. Like you really have to take it to some of these guys on Dallas Fuel, Atlanta Rain, the LA Gladiators with Anson Parifan. Like you got to take it to some of these guys and prove that you can win some of these team fights for your team. So it's a really important year for uh, Hisu. Uh, I'll, I'll be very keen to follow him this year. I, I think he's a very exciting talent and fun to watch. But he has to step it up this year, just one more level, in my opinion, if Toronto are to compete. Yeah, mm. I, I, I want to I, I want to agree to that because like Hisu, I think he's always been that sort of like secondary player, that person who's on the lineup. And you're like, yeah, it's good to have. But well, like if you look at the lineup right now with Finale and although beside him, he really is the DPS player, like the one that they're building around, like kind of what think of like Kevster for the Gladiators is like, you know, Kevster is going to be a constant. I think Hisu has to be that constant for this year because I can't really see them coming and playing finale, although like a lot. So I think a lot of the DPS lineup is going to ride on Hisu. I think he had a great 2021 season. I think he turned a lot of heads, especially on that Hanzo. Um, but yeah, I, I think he isn't at that caliber now where I would be like, oh yeah, I'm really confident in Hisu being able to go up against the best, like especially with how much talent is coming into this league from contenders as well. There is some new nutty players coming in um but i will say like just sort of i don't know if anyone wants to say more about hisu but i think a lot of my concerns like i like although i think i've seen bits and pieces i think he's solid finale is a little bit of my like is he going to be a little out of his depth especially as a rookie coming in with some of these other people when we talk like you know proper and speedily and stuff like that is finale yeah. going to be able to hold his own against yeah. those players yeah, I think um, Finale comes in from a pretty successful Uprising Academy team. I, I watched a little bit of them. I'll be I'll be straight. I didn't like get the full read on their entire season, just little bits and pieces. I think Victoria was a very important player on that team, and Finale was part of that. Um, yeah, I mean, that's the, the DPS trio of those two plus Stella were, were pretty decent. But to, to what Scott's saying as well, it's like, but are they going to be able to compete against some of the other insane rookies coming on through? Because you have the MN3s of the world as well you have the propers of the world, right? And, and things get really wild off that. And even looking at his specific position, um, you know, I, th I think there's just been, even he's got to compete against guys like Zest as well on, on Fusion in terms of being the same flex DPS position coming as a rookie. Um, might be a little bit out of his depth. And I'm actually excited for Aldo and Hisu to play together. I think Aldo being a little bit closer to that O2 Blast kind of gang is, gives him a bit more credence. Um, I also... I've seen a lot more of him personally, so I guess I can speak more positively to all those gameplays simply because I have casted him and I didn't really look over NA contenders as much. Uh, it's not one of my regions. Isu is a great player. I think he's he's one of their key players um, for the season and a great member to have brought over from that previous season. Like, if you've got to bring over anyone, Hisu's right at the top of the list. So, yeah, uh, maybe a little bit question marks for the, the rookies, but Hisu is undoubtedly going to be solid. Yeah, I mean, I'm a big believer in Hisu still. Personally, after his stint on Runaway, uh, coming out of Runaway to going to 2020 Fusion, where I personally think Fusion were at their best playing with him, um, him and Ivy. Uh, I thought that was by far their best iteration in 2020. Uh, and he was great in Contenders. And that, uh, I mean, the Toronto Defiant Rosh Hashanah was a fucking dumpster fire. I mean, it was just, a, it was a shit show. Like, it's 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 tough to get the value the same amount of value you had when you compare how fusion played in 2020 around him and the tempo and the way they utilized him like on the on, when they were playing like that samba reaper comp and, or or like the may stuff comparatively to what they were doing with defiant last year and like how disjointed that team was you know like i i just find it and he still had moments of greatness especially towards the end of the season so i i still feel confident about hisu as being like a centerpiece um for this team uh i think he's still really good I mean, it could be the start of like a falling off potentially, but you know, we'll still have to see coming into the next year if that's going to be the case. Because if there's ever a year for DPS to prove their worth, it's going to be the beginning of Overwatch 2, where it's going to be chaos and the mechanics are going to really shine. Um, and for the rest of DPS, on yeah, although 
I think he's a very solid player. Finale is definitely part of a two-part system for Uprising Academy. Uh, and uh, I mean, when you think about how like great they were comparatively to like Victoria in terms of like their success, I don't know. I think arguably their DPS line, there's still parts to be excited about. Um, so, you know, well, it's mid lane though. It's definitely mid lane. Well then, since we're continuing this trend as well for Defiant, for our team previews now that people have complained, coaching. I'm pretty sure they're coaching for the most part. They still have retained KDG, correct? As the head I'd coach. I'd love to see it. Yeah, KDG is still mm -hmm. the head coach. And they've added um, Moby Dick and Yang One. And Moby Dick came over from Fusion. And Yang One, I don't actually know where Yang One is from. Is it, was he with yeah, the I, um, in 2020, 2019? Oh, he was already with he was already with Yang. He was he with the last he was, yeah, yeah. He was oh, okay. Previously, I, before that, it was with I, Runaway, though. So he was one of those okay. one of the Runaway guys way back. Okay. Well, how are we feeling about coaching? Because personally, it seems like I, I had a lot of faith in KDG after his time in Dynasty. And it seems like it did not come to pass for this previous year of Toronto. Is this a redemption I'm, I'm year? Still, I'm still holding on to the KGG stock. As, some, as someone who simped for him, even after the Philadelphia Fusion run in 2020 as well, so Dynasty run, I, I was over the moon about him joining the Toronto Defiant last year and like really setting the team up. But I think, weren't there, wasn't there some kind of like, drama about the roster that they've already signed like half the roster they brought in a lot of players before even yeah i, I think kdg wrong, didn't have as much control over the building of that roster as i think he wanted last i year? think yeah last uh, year right yeah i think i remember that i think they had like it was probably like the beast and logics pieces and then they yeah. started bringing like some of the korean players yeah when he joined but i don't, I don't know I, i'm willing to give him the benefit of the doubt once more i feel like this is more of the team that he wanted to put together and he feels probably that like represents what uh how he wanted to structure it i think that last year was just like a bit of a mess naturally because you had uh, some of these logics and beast pieces and you had to pick up aspire as well because of you know, covid reasons and covid you know covid not covid did not turn out to be great but aspire did turn out to be great <laughs> i mean covid was definitely a star player covid was definitely a star player on a lot of rosters though a lot of impact that season a lot of impact uh, yeah <laughs> So, uh, but but I think that this year, I, I'm willing to give KDG one more year because of his prior success and how much I respected his, even like player rotations on Philadelphia Fusion, like the DPS players, how they rotated, like uh, uh, subbing in boombox at times in the support line for uh, his Batiste in 2020 as well. Like, I, I think that that Fusion team was really well managed in 2020 and they squeezed everything possible from that roster to make it top four that season um in so many different metas they were competitive so i have a lot of respect for kdg in that regard so i'm willing to give him the benefit of the doubt once more and if, if this is the team he's put together i think they can punch above their weight they're not going to be you know winning regionals they're not going to be competing with the top teams but i think they can be a middle of the pack team that can take some series of some of the bigger players okay okay so overall coaching staff you know, we're going to have to wait and see. They've added some decent pieces with, like, Moby Dick from Fusion. Um, but, you know, it's kind of like a wait and see. Overall, the roster is looking all right, kind of hod hodgepodgey here. What are we feeling placement-wise for this team? Where are they aiming to get? And where would you think they're going to get, you know? I think that I would put them in a solid, like, six to eight range is where I would say in North America. I think they're going to struggle to deal with like your, you know, Gladiators, Dallas Fuels, potentially Washington Justice, San Francisco Shock, but I think they're just outside of it. Like, I think there's a tier break and then I think it's Toronto Defiant. There are, there's a world in which I think they like, it all comes together. Like their tank line is actually sick and they actually like massively over exceed expectations. But the same thing can be said the other side. There's a lot of variance in this team, but I think six to eight is eh, six, seven, I think is around where I'd put them. They're okay. top half for me. I think they're top half um, for sure in North America, just to be clear. It's, I think it'd be too hard for me to do global right now for a team like this. I think they have the capability to be maybe if they like really reach their peaks as high as maybe like fifth even um, and competing against teams like maybe Houston Outlaws, potentially NYXL. Like I, I think they can be Ooh. around that kind of level even. I'm saying like if they really pull it together, because yeah. like, this team has capability. No, I, no I see what you're saying. I'm, I'm, I, I think when we do our power rankings eventually, like leading into this, this year is going to be so interesting because there are so many teams in that middle of the pack kind of mix that have mm -hmm. like genuinely really good players. 
Yeah. And if you're, uh, you know, if you were to ask me of my opinion, like, do you think Toronto Defiance DPS line is going to be able to hold a candle towards some of those DPS lines? Whether it's even like New York Excelsior with Flora and Yaki, or it's Houston Outlaws with Dante and Pelican, like, it's going to be tough. You have to find some kind of a compositional advantage, have one of the tanks pop off and really rally around Chorong and Twilight in the back line having a big impact. But if, if if 5v5 is going to emphasize on DPS players, it's going to be tough for the Toronto Defiant to find like something they can lean on to get an advantage against some of these other teams as well. Yeah, I think I'm in agreement. They're looking extremely meh to me, honestly. Like when you compare, not because their roster is bad, but it just when you compare to how stacked everyone is looking and how also more cohesive and I think uh, how many like at points less holes that other teams have like when you think about like their tank line in particular um like there's just less holes and then there's less like question marks about how the dps going to perform so six to eight probably is a very fair placement with like if they do if everything goes really well for them they can be fighting for that five to six spot like Avril was saying so yeah. but I, I i don't i find unlikely that's going to happen so probably a six to eight position just because of how strong everyone's gonna but definitely possible definitely possible uh, still be fighting for the upper and i want to emphasize if anyone from Overactive Media is watching, you have a really exciting team. I'm, it is. It's I've a good team. never been this excited to watch the Toronto Defiant going into a season ever. This is this is a really fun roster. Chorong and Twilight backline. You got Heaston in the mix. Two solid tank players. I'm I'm excited to watch the Toronto Defiant. I want to see their season unfold. I'm genuinely very excited. So you got that going for you. If that it, that's some aid because you try to be like championship roster, but it's not really. Yeah. Well, there we go. Quality. So there you go. If you're a Defiant fan, you should have some hope. But, you know, may, we'll have to see if the hope pans out, if they can make it work in the upcoming season. Uh, so we still have one more preview we're going to be getting out here today. But that has been the Toronto Defiant. And we will be right back with another team preview.